I want to talk to you a little bit about really what are some of the pharmaceutical options that we have. As, as Dr. Hawkins mentioned to you, right, there's the, the, really the goal is to bring the pressures down, and we have different ways, and one of the most common ways uh, really do we do that are with pharmaceutical agents or drops that we have as well. But we have other ways of delivering medications. We'll talk about something called drug delivery as well. Uh, just a little bit about me. I am just north of here in Wisconsin. I am a cheesehead. I actually have a cheese head that fits over my turban that made so my parents knew that my roots, I would never forget my roots as a Packer cheese head as well. Uh, and if you are not from the Wisconsin area, or you haven't been up there, we love our beer, we love our cheese, love our Packers. We love, my mom used to love bread fire. Very good bread, she loved bread. But um, we love our deep fry. We deep fry everything. And if you ever want to deep fry butter and you want to taste what it tastes like, come up to the Wisconsin State Fair and you will find everything known to man or woman deep fried. It's pretty impressive. Um, but it, it is my, well, I would like to just give a little uh, homage to my father, you know, who was my mentor. And everything I am today is because of my dad and, and what he taught me. Uh, I, the best decision I ever made after fellowship was coming to join my dad's practice. And, and this is on the left is the day I kind of took over the practice. And on the, the right is the last day my dad was in the surgery with me as well. And what he taught me was never be complacent to keep pushing forward. And part of what I love about trying new technology and always trying to push the envelope and seeing what else is out there is because of the, the kind of the example he set for me. So I just like to give a little credit to him always. And I do have three kids, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. He, he unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but I had, a, I had the, the benefit of practicing with him for about 13 good, really productive years and as a mentor, but also as a colleague, which is a fantastic way to learn about who he was as a person. So I appreciate that. And, and for those of you who have kids, young or, or older, uh, they go by fast. And I remember uh, one of my mentors told me in fellowship when I actually had my first child, you know, Paul, take your time, enjoy your kids. And I was like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, no problem. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, these are my kids. And all of a sudden the next thing I woke up, I'm like, wait, that's what they look like now, what happened? And so they go by fast, so enjoy every moment. And I think it's important for all of us, as, as you mentioned earlier, Pat, about enjoying your passion. We don't have to always have one passion. And, and for me, music is my passion. I'm in a band called Funkadesi, which mixes Indian funk and reggae. And what's neat about the band is that we mix different styles of music, but we have different, we have diversity within the band, different socioeconomic backgrounds, education, religion backgrounds. And so it's the idea, the mantra of this, of this band is one family, many children. There's more that binds us than that separates us. And I use that same philosophy when I'm engaging with my patients, right? There's so much more that binds us. We find the commonality with patients more than that separates us. And that's been something that's helped me as a provider as well. But back to eye care and back to glaucoma. Uh, what is our goal as Dr. Hawkins mentioned? Pressure. All we have, the only way we can modify and treat you right now, we have a lot of studies coming out on other ways, but it's bring that pressure down, protect the nerve from getting damage as well. And as I always tell all my patients, right, the eye is like a water balloon, right? Your eye has to make water to keep that shape of that balloon, otherwise it flattens out. But the eye is consistently making water, so it has to drain. And in your eye, your natural drain where the fluid leaves the eye is just not working. So we have to somehow get those pressures down. And we can do that on multiple ways. And we can address different parts of the eye. We can address the trabecular meshwork, which is what she talked about, then the pores that drain. That's the main mechanism why fluid leaves the eye. Or another part of the eye called the ciliary body, which is another area where fluid can drain out of the eye to different blood vessels. And so we can use different drops and different technologies to access those different parts of the drainage system of the eye. And so we can bring the pressures down with drops. We have drug delivery I'll talk about, ways to deliver the medication without using drops. We'll talk about why, and even pills sometimes temporarily can help us achieve that pressure that we need. But we also have other ways, and you'll hear later on Dr. Q talking about lasers and surgery options, and we'll talk about when and why those options are, are important. And so for me, it's a toolbox. There's no one right drug, no one right way of approaching glaucoma and how we treat the pressures. It depends on anatomy, depends on where we want the pressures to go down to. Every patient's different in terms of what pressure their eye needs to protect them. And our job as eye care providers is to find out at what pressure will you stay stable. So in one patient, the, so 10 to 21 considered normal, there are people that have pressures of 25 that never develop bad glaucoma. They stay stable. There's some people with a pressure of 15 that have bad glaucoma. And our job is to find out, using the Psi vision test, that visual field, looking at the nerve, seeing are you stable at that pressure, or if you're getting worse, we get the pressures down more. So we may use one, two, three different drops with different what we call mechanisms we'll talk about to achieve that pressure to a certain target that we want to get to. And we also may employ other things in our little toolbox, lasers and surgery, depending on if you're able to tolerate drops, are the drops working enough? to get you down to that level that we have to get you to as well. 
So when we look at the drops, the pharmaceuticals that we have today, we have two main goals in mind. We have drops that help the fluid leave the eye through those different parts of the eye, the trabecular meshwork and that uveal scleral pathway, those two pathways. Or we have drops that decrease how much fluid the eye makes. So decreasing the fluid or helping it leave the eye, one of the two ways. And the most common drug we'll talk about is a drug called the prostaglandin analog. And a lot of you have probably been on latanoprost or some version of that one drop at night, that little green top at night as well. And that's part of the outflow drops. It's helping us through the uveal scleral pathway. I'm also gonna to talk to you about exciting new drugs that have been out for the last few years that help us open up the natural drain, the, what we call the trabecular meshwork. But let's talk a little bit about the prostaglandins. You may have heard of latanoprost, Luma again, Travitan, Zyoptan, the different companies that make this class of medications. It's a once a day medication, which is why we like it so much, usually at night, but I say take it any time of the day, as long as you can take it every day at the same time. I'm not too concerned exactly what time you take it. And it increases, again, that drainage system of the uveal scleral pathway, which we'll talk about again. Very low bodily systemic side effects. So if you have asthma, heart disease, if you have other conditions, we're not quite as concerned with this class of medications of causing those systemic bodily other systemic condition to get worse as well. And it's very powerful. We, on average, get the pressures down about 30% from where you started from, which is kind of what we want to get to for a lot of our typical first treatment of glaucoma patients as well. And it keeps that pressure, a lot of times, from going up and down. Kind of like in diabetes or high blood pressure, we don't want the pressure to go up and down in your blood or the diabetes. We want the sugar levels to stay nice and stable. Same thing in the eye. We want those pressures to stay nice and stable. And this drug and this class of drugs, by opening up those pores, can help us keep that pressure from going up and down, even at nighttime. And I'm going to talk to you about different classes of medications. Latanoprost on the bottom, that black uh, line there, you see how it's bringing the pressures down the most out of all these other classes of drugs, and it keeps that curve more stable. Some of the other medications you see here, dorzolamide, timolol, I'll talk to you about, that decrease how much fluid the eye makes are not quite as powerful on their own and sometimes will cause the pressure to go up and down a little bit there. That's why we like this class of drugs at nighttime, prostaglandins. Of course, every drug has some type of side effect. No matter, no matter how much we love these medications, we have to be aware of that. And as, as patients, to be aware, it can cause sometimes the eyelashes to get longer. You can sometimes lose some of the fat around the eye. So if you look at that patient who has the drop in one eye, the left eye, look how much more sunken in that eye looks over time. That can happen. Redness can happen, dry eye can happen. Pigmentation can change of the color part of the eye, the iris. So it's just too important to be aware. And if that happens, to so tell your eye care provider, as you'll hear later on, we have ways to get you off the drop if these things are happening, if you're having a hard time taking the medication as well. And that was kind of the most common kind of drug we use right now, that class of medications. But what has been exciting over the last couple of years is a new class of medications that work on that trabecular meshwork. These are agents that actually open up that pores, as Dr. Hawk has talked to you about. Those are the pores that become damaged. On the left is a healthy pores, like a sponge where the fluid leaves the eye. On the right is a glaucoma, kind of scarred and we call fibrotic and, and not really healthy. So those pores are getting stuck and that's where the fluid can percolate into the drainage system. And so we have drugs, one drug is called Visolta that's come out, which is very similar to that latanoprost, that drop at night. It's part of that class of medications, but what makes it unique is that when it goes into the eye, it actually allows it to release something called nitric oxide. So when you put that drop in the eye, it's once a day, it's one molecule, but when it goes in the eye, it gets broken down in the eye to latanoprost, that drop at night that I showed you earlier, the prostaglandin, but it also has another byproduct called nitric oxide. In the body, in the cardiovascular disease, nitric oxide helps dilate the blood vessels in the heart for people who have heart disease. And the same idea is to open up those pores in the drainage system to help the fluid leave the eye better. So it's been shown in data to give us the ability to have those two molecules with one drug in the eye. And on the left is the idea behind it. If you look at those pores on the left, the G JCT are the tissues where the fluid leaves the eye. And you see how those, those, those little bottle omeboid things are close together? On the right, after the drug, you're trying to separate those, giving more space for fluid to leave the eye in the natural drain. And again, that's the drain that's getting, getting blocked, as Dr. Hawkins talked about. So we actually can address 
the area of what we call pathology, the area that's getting damaged, causing the pressure to go up. Comparing this drug to latanoprost or zalatan, what we found is that is you get an extra about a point or point and a half depending on the patient. Some patients get more effect differently. Some patients don't have a different effect compared to latanoprost. But there are some patients who do get a little better effect, and it's the same type of complications or adverse events or side effects as the latanoprost molecule. So it's another, another way to utilize this molecule once a day and help, again, address not just the uveal scleral pathway, but those, that meshwork, the drainage system that's getting blocked as well. Another drug that's been really exciting for us and has unique mechanisms, also opening up that meshwork, is are called rokinase inhibitors, natarsidil, trade name is Ropressa. And this is a medication that came out a few years ago, and what's unique about it, it also, like Visolta, has the ability to open up those pores in that trabecular meshwork I was talking to you about, but it also has the ability to decrease how much fluid the eye makes a little bit, as well as decrease the pressure in the blood vessels around the eye, because the fluid has to go from the inside of the eye to outside the eye, eventually into the bloodstream. And the bloodstream pressure can limit how low those pressures can go. If we can lower the floor, lower the blood pressure around the eye, the eye pressure there, we can get the overall eye pressure to go down differently than the other drugs. It's the first drug of its kind to do that in clinical practice. And it's allowed us to get the levels that we couldn't get to before, sometimes the 10, 12 range, even below, where we couldn't get there with a lot of the other medications. To show you an example, looking at a slide, on the left is what a tissue looks like when it's not healthy. Those the pores are kind of compact on the left there. So the fluid can't traverse through those, that compact tissue. On the right, after putting a drop of these, or bathing it with this medication, you see how those tissues are separated? There's more space between the layers. That allows allows the fluid to percolate like a sponge into the drainage system. And that's what this medication does, natarsidil. It also not only opens up that tissue, but again, it decreases the pressure in the blood vessels. So that is a unique mechanism, which is why we can get to sometimes pressures lower than we could get with a lot of our other medications that we've talked about before and we'll talk about as well. So this unique mechanism of de decreasing the blood pressure around the eye is really important. Where I use Repressa a lot, this Notarsidil, is usually as a second agent after Latanoprost or that class of medications, Visolta I talked to you about. Those the class of medications, they use this first because it's powerful. This will give you about four or five points down from where you start from. But the unique point of it is whether you have one drop or you're on two or three different drops, the pressure does come down regardless the same amount. So you're going to get that four or five points reduction whether you're on one drop or two or three different medications. So it's unique in that way as well. And when you compare uh, the studies that show patients who are on uh, a drop and then you add Ropressa to it, we have better chances on the light green of getting down to a pressure more than just using the drops we had before, like latanoprost as well. So we're better able to get down to lower pressures when we add this drop to what we have already. So it's a unique mechanism that I think helps. With the studies that have been done in real life, it's a very safe medication, no systemic bodily effects or adverse events. Unfortunately, there still can be eye events, and the most common event is redness. So you may see people coming in with red eyes. Now, why? Well, remember I talked about it increasing the blood flow or helping the blood pressure around the eye go down? Sometimes that can engorge or dilate the blood vessels around the white part of the eye, and that can cause the eye to look red. It can come and go, so it's not always going to be red for every patient, mostly mild. But if it does happen, I tell patients it's not an allergic reaction, not an infection, it's not going to hurt your eye, and it may come and go or get better over time. But that can happen. Redness is very common. And also, some of those little red dots you see, because we're opening up the blood flow, some of these little blood dots there, little, little, little spots there, looks like little, blood, little hemorrhages. They don't hurt your eye, but people can notice that. Sometimes doctors can notice that. Again, nothing to worry about if it happens. That medication, that natarsidil, is also in one bottle, right? We talked about compliance, people having a hard time taking drops all the time. Well, now we have a combination of this medication, natarsidil, with latanoprost, with that prostaglandin analog, in one bottle, called Rocklatan. So it has the same mechanisms as the latanoprost, as well as that Ropressa, in one bottle. Same complications or adverse events, but uniquely in one bottle to help with compliance. So you don't have to take two different drops at night, you can take this one drop as well. And looking at data that supports latanoprost alone versus this drug, this combination, again, better chance of getting the pressures down, 30%, 40%, et cetera. So when we need to get those pressures down lower, if latanoprost is not working enough, we can add this drop or switch over to this medication, this combination, to get it lower if we need to without adding a lot more bottles and a lot more risks as well. 
Moving on to another drug that helps the drain open up is what Dr. Hawkins mentioned is a drop called pilocarpine or myotics. It brings the pupil down really tight, right? That kind of opens up the drain. So if you have a narrow angle, it can open that angle that she talked about. And in some people, even historically, when we didn't have these newer molecules, we would use this to help bring the pressures down. The, we don't use this much a lot anymore because of the side effects. It was a three or four times a day medication and it used to give brow aches or headaches. So we don't use it as often, but once in a while we will use it for certain situations and just to be aware it can happen. So those are the drugs that help the fluid leave the eye. Let's talk about drops that help decrease how much fluid the eye makes, right? Decreasing the fluid decreases the pressure. And it, it happens with that ciliary body. That ciliary body down below on the left is where the eye produces fluid. So we have medications that can help halt how much fluid the eye makes. And there are different kinds. The most common kind, which is really well tolerated, as well as usually very cheap, so the most part a generic, is called a beta blocker. It's usually once a day in the morning, and it's very safe to use for the most part. It does, though, have systemic effects. People who have asthma, sometimes heart issues, heart block, we call it different kind of blood uh, heart rhythms, may not be the best uh, candidate for these uh, type of drops. They can also cause you to be tired and fatigued. Even sometimes cholesterol can go up in certain studies as well. So we have to be careful to make sure we ask our patients and for you as, as well as to let us know, do you have some of those issues as well? Because that can happen. There is a medication called betaxolol, which is more specific. It doesn't have as many of those side effects. But again, sometimes not easy to get that medication. And also there's a version of it that's preservative free. As we'll talk about, dry eyes is a big issue with glaucoma drops and the chemicals and the preservatives in them can cause more surface issues. This does come in a preservative free version as well. But it's important to understand it's a safe medication overall as long as you understand that there's some systemic issues that can happen. Another class that helps decrease how much fluid the eye makes, and these are again usually second line agents after we use latanoprost, that prostaglandin, is something called carbonic anhydrous inhibitors. Also decreases with an enzyme how much fluid the eye makes. Usually two times a day when we add it to that prostaglandin at nighttime. So we have this twice a day and then latanoprost usually at nighttime. Again, very well tolerated. Uh, it does have some issues sometimes with bitter taste. It can sometimes burn. Sometimes depending on which drug, it can be a little thicker and leave a little crusting as well. And sometimes if you have an unhealthy surface of the eye, the cornea, it can cause sometimes cause swelling. So again, just to be aware of those side effects, but overall, very, very safe. And there's also a pill version of this medication that we have called acetazolamide or methazolamide. These are pills you can take that do the same thing, but in a pill form. And they're very powerful. I'll use these a lot of times if I more urgently have a patient with very high pressures in the office, give them a couple pills. But long term, we don't like to keep them on pills because it can cause some numbness and tingling, stomach issues as well. And if you have sulfa allergies to a certain medications, that can be a risk factor for causing a problem. So we don't use this a lot of times on more, more patients long term, but short term for urgent situations to get the pressures down, we will use these pills to help bring those pressures down. Another class that's really uh, very commonly used is something called alpha agonist, which is a purple top tube, usually a purple top drop, usually twice a day. There's a generic and a brand name version called Alphagan. And again, this medication decreases how much fluid the eye makes for the most part. It also helps the fluid leave the eye in some studies too, but mostly decreases how much fluid the eye makes. A very good drug as well. It can cause sometimes dry mouth. Sometimes you can get a little dizzy with this as well. It can sometimes cross into the blood brain barrier, we call it, and cause you to feel a little bit weaker. But the key of this is it can cause some allergic reactions. Sometimes you get patients like this, even over time, after let's say a year or two of using this, they say, come back and they're like, doc, what happened? You can develop an allergic reaction to this medication. And this is why I'm not a big fan of always pushing brand name all the time, but I do think there's a difference between brand name and generics, especially with this molecule. If you can get the lower concentration version, the 0.1%, less chance of allergic reactions. So I tell patients the generics are fine to use, but some patients don't tolerate a generic, and sometimes there's not the same kind of what we call inactive ingredients or where they outsource it from. So it's important to recognize, although generics are cheaper, they're not always exactly the same as a brand name. So you're your doctor may recommend a brand name medication in certain situations. The last couple of minutes, I know I'm running a little bit late here, but we can also combine these drugs. Compliance is hard to take different bottles and wait five minutes apart between drops. So we have drops that combine a drop called Timolol and Bermonidine, that alpha agonist, and called Combagan. Simbrinza, a drop that combines the Combaric and Hydrous inhibitor and that Bermonidine. COSOP comes in preservative-free vials. 
that timolol and that carbonic. And we have, I told you earlier, that ro ro roclatan, latanoprost and natarsidil. So a lot of times your doctors may say, hey, we have to get those pressures down lower. Let's go ahead and add, instead of adding a next, next bottle, let's combine it into one combination bottle to make it easier for you as well. There's a few other advances that I think are happening in this world now, which is really exciting, and something called nano dropper. A lot of times our patients put drops and like such a big volume of drop goes in the eye, and the eye can only handle a certain amount. Only 5% of the drop actually gets into the eyeball. The rest of it gets washed away with our tear duct and around the eye and gets kind of out of the eye. So if we can minimize how much drop actually goes in the eye, only what the eye needs, we can save money and save the drop from getting wasted. And there's something called nano dropper, and I think this company is here, you can talk to them. They have a, a way that you can screw on this top here that allows you to actually save yourself money because comp money is a big issue, cost is an issue. You just squir squir uh, skew, uh, screw this on and then it allows it then to use the bottle. You keep that on for the life of the bottle that allows you to use this drop and decrease the size of the drop that comes out to minimize wastage as well. So something to think about as well if you're having a hard time. For the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through this, but there's a lot of new companies, Santen and others that are working on different molecules to work on bringing the blood pressure of the eye, around the eye down open up the drain. So there's a lot of research to feel good that there's more coming down the pike. Hopefully we'll have more options for you as patients in the future. The last few minutes I want to talk about is this, compliance. Compliance is hard. Patients have a hard time remembering, cost, the side effects, and a lot of times studies show our patients, you all know this better than I do, have a hard time taking it every day, going to the pharmacy, getting refills as well. It's sometimes hard to remember the different dosing regimens, as well as, again, we talked about cost, and dry eyes issues, and physical attributes. People will try different things. I've had patients come in, I say, Mr. Smith, take an artificial tea in my office and see what happens. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think drop is the best option for you. Let's talk about other options, and we'll talk about, Mary's gonna talk about those other options. But people will do everything they can. Dry eye, the more drops we add over time, the more surface-related issues. The, the surface of the eye gets dry, causing tearing, fluctuating vision, uh, light sensitivity. And the more bottles we add, the more risk we have of getting a dry eye state. So we wanna minimize the number of bottles, which is why those drop preservative-free drops or those combination drops are important. Because studies have shown if you have a surface dry eye, you have symptoms of dry eye, you are less likely to stay compliant, to stay in that drop for a long period of time. And that's what the studies have shown us and why we have to address the surface of the eye as well. So with that said, dry eye drops uh, you can use. There's drops to treat dry eye, getting you off the drops, preservative-free medications that we have available, as well as those combinations can help you. And again, these symptoms are all possible with glaucoma medications, whether allergic reactions, lash growth, et cetera. So make sure you tell your doctor because there are ways to get you off the drops. You don't have to suffer with drops, even though we like them a lot and they work, you don't have to suffer. And so for me, the art of glaucoma now is not just is your pressure good at that visit that day. If you are someone like this lady here who has crusting and redness, and, you're, and I think you have a low likelihood of staying on that regimen long term, to me you're not controlled. I will offer you something else, as you'll hear about from Mary, to help manage you and maintain a high quality of life. And one thing that's been exciting, I'm gonna leave you with the last one and a half minutes, is something called drug delivery. Drug delivery is a way to deliver these medications, especially that prostaglandin analog, without you having to physically take it. We can gently place it in the eye at the lamp, the same place you get your pressures checked. We can press a button and push this medicine into the eye. What we have available right now is a medicine called Darista or Bimatoprost, which is a drop called Lumigan, one drop that's in a small pellet. But we have other modalities, other companies working on different types of ways to deliver the medications without you having to take drops in the eye. And so what I'm gonna talk about briefly is Darista. I use this a lot as well, where we, in the office, we can press a button right here, and it's a small, small microscopic needle. It doesn't hurt you, just like a, eye, an eye pressure check. We press a button, and it goes in the eye and sits in the bottom of the eye, inside the eye, releasing medicine for four months. The lasting effect, how long it lasts, can be six months, a year, even two years, with just one pellet. And it's very comfortable, very safe for the most part for patients. So if someone can't tolerate a medication and I want to get them off the drops for a period of time, this could be a good option for them. And there's other products that are being worked on. I'm part of the study as well called the iDose, which is a small little, you can see on the right there, we make a small opening into the eye, smaller than we do with even cataract surgery. We put a little canister that releases medicine for a couple of years as well. So you're going to see more of these products in the near future coming out to help us deliver medications without you having to physically take them in the eye. So the key is to ask your doctor to be honest about, hey, I'm really not having, able to take these medications. 
This med uh, the Darista, if you have Medicare Part B and a supplement, it's actually covered 100% for you. So it could be cheaper than a generic latanoprost even. And so don't be afraid to tell your eye care provider that you're having a hard time with medications because the last thing you want to do is not understand that you're not taking it and then have you get worse over time as well.